Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MatTube. This is lesson number 5 in the examination preparation series for the second year engineering students. And in this video, we learn how to solve the linear programming problem with the help of simplex method. And in this video, I'll introduce you to a method which is slightly easier than the regular simplex methods which you see in most of the books. And as always, the most important question, and I'm sure you know the answer. And when we learn simplex method, point number one and point number two are extremely important. And same with point number four. You have to do a lot of problems once you complete or finish watching this video. And finally, test yourself whether you are able to solve the questions by yourself okay and with that let's start the simplex method and I'm going to use a problem which was asked long back in 2073 and I'm sure you know the linear programming problem LPP how a linear programming problem looks like there will be an objective function and remember all these linear programming problems are mathematical models of real life scenarios. So this might be a factory problem or this might be a diet problem or this might be related to agriculture. So they have modeled uh, a real life scenario into mathematics and the objective function can be maximize or minimize. Okay. And these are the difficulties in the real life scenario when they try to maximize or minimize. Maybe uh, it is related to time or money or maybe labor. It can be anything. Anyway, uh, in mathematics, we learn how to solve these problems. Of course, in this video using simplex method, but I promise something it's not the regular simplex method something slightly easier than the regular simplex method okay so question number one look at this suppose you have two buildings adjacent buildings and the building on the right is slightly taller than the building on the left how can you make the height of both the buildings same but you are not allowed to touch the building on the right so you have only one option you increase the height of the building on the left that is you're going to add a little bit so that both will be equal now look at this inequations are like this look at the first uh, constraint first condition we have x1 plus 2x2 less than or equal to 32 and now look at the buildings you are not allowed to touch the right hand side so what did I do I am adding something so that the height is same okay so what I do is I am going to add a quantity I am going to add s1 so that both the sides will be equal okay and I do the same thing with the second inequation so I'm going to get 3x1 plus 4x2 plus s2 is equal to 84. And one very important thing uh, that is we take our objective function. And in the objective function, what we do is we take all these quantities to the left. Yeah, one, one minute, one very important thing. Book to book, the simplex process will be slightly different but the final answer must be the same some people will keep uh, everything on the right side and in my process what i do is i take everything to the left side and some people might need greater than or equal to symbol etc etc that's just uh, book to book it will be different yeah okay so let's continue so what i do with the objective function is I take everything to the left so I get something like 50 x1 in negative and 80 x2 
and there are variables s1 and s2 of course uh, that will be kept as 0 0 s1 plus 0 s2 plus z equal to 0 so this is exactly what happens to the uh, objective function uh, now look at this I'm sure you're familiar with the graphical method in graphical method what we do is uh, maybe we got uh, two lines like this somehow we, we ended up with a feasible region and you learned that or there is theory that the maximum and the minimum occurs only at the corner points so first we travel along the x-axis then we travel along the y-axis and then along these lines that is how we find the corner points and that is exactly what is going to happen uh, in this method okay so let's start with the first table okay I'm sure you're expecting a simplex table no I'm going to do this with the help of a matrix now look at this we design the matrix and on the top if you want you can write this anyway it's good that you write this in the first step now the first inequation which we made into an equation so look at the coefficients it's like 1 2 1 etc etc it goes like this 1 2 1 and then 0 there is no s2 you can see in the first this one there is no s2 and there is no z so it's 0 and I'm going to put a little bit dots and the right hand side is 32 okay and the next one it's like 3 4 0 yeah so it's 3 and then 4 and then 0 1 0 and the right side is 84 and now what we do is we write the objective function so that is minus 50 so minus 50 minus 80 and then 0 0 1 and 0 now look at this this is the initial simplex table or the initial simplex matrix okay now what we do is we find the biggest contributor look at this when you look at the question you can see that x2 contributes more if you produce one unit of x2 it gives us 80 I don't know whether it is money or units or whatever but think about it if you produce one unit of x2 then you get a profit of 80 at the same time if you produce one unit of x1 you get just 50 so x2 contrib contributes more than x1 I'll repeat once more x2 contributes more than x1 but when you look at the matrix you'll see that uh, 80 comes with a negative so the method is uh, you pick the most negative quantity because that will be giving us the biggest contribution and this column is called the pivot column okay now what we do is we write something called ratio you can write this outside the matrix and we divide this 32 by 2 so 32 by 2 is 16 and then 84 by 4 actually we are trying to find the corner points and that is 21 and now we are finding the tightest constraint we are actually trying to find which constraint gives us more trouble so what we did is we are trying to find the intercept if you have learned the graphical method you'll understand what we just did by that ratio anyway as a method if you want to study as a method uh, you can use the smallest number the least positive number I'll repeat the least positive number which is available here and in case you get zero or negative just ignore those things and if you get the same quantity you can choose any one you like anyway you don't have an option 16 is the least positive number so my pivot element is this 2 I hope you understood that part so first we find the biggest contributing factor in the objective function and that will be 
the number the most negative number here and then we find the ratio and with the help of that ratio we will find the tightest constraint and that is actually this so we have the pivot element 2 now what we do is very simple we make the pivot element 1 and that will be table number 2 so I'll write the operation R1 I think you can see the first row the second row the third row so R1 changes to R1 times 1 by 2 you already learned matrices so these operations will be really easy for you so I'm going to multiply throughout by 1 by 2 so that the pivot element will become 1 1 by 2 and then this will become 1 and this is going to become and this will be 1 by 2 and 0 will remain the same and finally it's going to be 16 and we don't need these things so this will be your table number 2 so I hope you understood so what we did is we are dividing through our, we found the pivot element and then we are multiplying throughout by 1 by 2 so that the pivot element will become 1 now it's very easy you make the numbers just beneath and above so you make the numbers beneath and there is nothing above to 0 using this so I'll write the operation I'm going to write R2 changes to look at this our target is here R2 R2 minus 4 R1 and then R3 changes to R3 plus 80 R1 so we wrote the operations R2 changes to R2 minus 4 R1 and R3 changes to R3 plus 80 times R1 so we go for the next table and I have kept the first the la previous table over here so there is no change in R1 so we are going to copy R1 as such so the members are 1 by 2 1 1 by 2 0 0 and 16 and then the operation is R2 minus 4 R1 so 3 minus 4 times 1 by 2 so that's going to give you 1 and then 0 you can calculate yourself I'm sure you're good with matrix 1 0 but make sure you do the calculations by yourself otherwise you'll be struggling with those steps in the exam and if you want you can keep this separator and now the last operation is R3 plus 80 R1 so it's kind of like minus 50 plus 80 times into 1 by 2 that will be minus 50 plus 40 and that is minus 10 and then it's going to be 0 and then 40 0 1 1 2 8 0 now look at this the last row the objective function this was our objective function it look at this row if all are positive you can be happy because uh, you get the optimal value but the last row is not positive there is still one member so this is going to be our next pivot column and now I'll write ratio so what I do is I do 16 by 1 by 2 that is 16 into 2 that will be 32 and then I do 20 by 1 so that gives me 20 now I'll take the least and that means this is our pivot element I hope you understood I went I found the most negative quantity here and then I took the ratio and I found the least positive number 32 and 20 so this is the least so this is our pivot element now what should we do next we have to make the pivot element to 1 we should make this 1 and then it's already 1 it's already 1 so all you have to do is you have to make the element above and below the pivot element to 0 I kept the table so that 
uh, we can write the operations so the element above should be zero so our target is in first row so r1 changes to r1 minus 1 by 2 r2 and our next target is in r3 so r3 changes to r3 plus 10 r2 so let's try the next step um, so the first row is going to change so 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 0 now 1 minus 0 that is 1 and then 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 into 2 that is going to be 3 by 2 and I'll recommend you do the calculations by yourself there is no point in copying this because you have to be perfect with the method uh, when you go for exams and there is no change in the second row so we copy the same thing we see above 0 20 and of course the optimal so this will be 0 and again a 0 and then 20 and 10 and 1 and this is 1480 okay now look at this okay the good news first look at the last row all the elements are positive and that means we have reached an optimal condition okay so the good news first now look at this uh, you, now you don't have to look at this part yeah can you see the columns of an identity matrix identity matrix in 2 by 2 means 1 0 0 1 so I want you to find 0 1 and 1 0 you will be able to see the columns and I'll do one thing I'll write the variables uh, x1 x2 s1 s2 z and rhs this is how we started and now look at this I found an identity column now what we do is we go down and can you see one okay now you go to this side and write the same thing here I found another identity column so you go down meet one did you meet one yes now you go to this side and write the same thing here now I'll circle something okay look at this x2 and you go straight yeah so I'm going to write x2 is equal to 6 and I'll circle again now we go straight to the right side so I'm going to write x1 is equal to 20 and now look at this value okay now we'll write the maximum possible value for z is equal to 1480 if you don't want to write the value from here you can substitute these things in the given objective function over here you can substitute those values here and you'll get the same answer so that's it in the next video we will do a lot of problems um, using simplex method and to be honest slightly different from the regular simplex method so I'll be back soon so till then bye